What's up everybody? Welcome to Cody with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at Express Middleware. Now, chances are, if you've ever written any kind of Express application or any kind of Node application where you've used Express, you have used middleware. A really good example of middleware that you for sure use if you've ever used Express is going to be Body Parser. So middleware is something that you definitely use very, very, very frequently when you're writing any kind of Express application. So the goal for this video is to kind of explain to you exactly how middleware works and even more so how you might be able to write your own middleware to solve your own specific use cases. So let's get into it. So here we are in the uh, code editor, and as you'll see, I already have a, the basics of a simple Express application running. So I've got a, I've got my uh, import of Express. I'm setting up the app object by calling the Express function, and then here I have a simple uh, endpoint defined. I'm saying app that get. We're going to go to slash hello, and then we've got the rec the res, and then we're going to go ahead and send back a status code of 200 with the uh, key value of success is equal to true. And then finally, the last thing we're doing is we're going to specify that this particular server is going to be listening on port 5000. Then we're going to have a callback that you know when, when we run the server, the callback is going to start up the server and then say okay you're successfully running on port 5000 so let's just go ahead and run this we're going to say npx nodemon server.js that's going to allow us to use nodemon to kind of uh, restart the server every single time we make changes now as we move on over to our browser so we can go to slash hello so we're going to go to localhost 5000 slash hello and as you can see we do in fact get success true so everything is working exactly as expected this is a sort of starting point for us to now dive into the actual middleware okay so the first example that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be an example of us trying to build our own logger so basically Basically, the idea is what we want to do is we want to have it where every single time a request comes into our server, we're going to want to have it to log to our terminal of exactly which endpoint was the one that received the request. So here we have on screen, we currently have that example. As you'll notice, I've uh, defined a function called logger, and then this function is accepting three arguments. The first one is going to be the rec object, res, and then next. So the rec and the res, I'm sure you're already pretty familiar with if you've written Express, because you can even see it down here. I've got my simple, you know, method handler app that get. We're going to go to slash hello, and then the function that I pass at that endpoint is, of course, just a function that receives the rec and the res. So that's pretty standard for when you're writing any kind of, you know, regular Express uh, endpoint. However, the next is the one that you might not be that familiar with. But as it turns out, the next is actually one of the most important things because that's kind of how middleware works. So let me explain. So basically, here's our middleware function. As I said, it receives the rec and the res in the next. What it's doing is it's going to go ahead and say console.log request received at rec original URL. Now this next argument that gets passed in as it turns out is a function and all we need to do is go ahead and call this next function. And I'm very soon going to explain why that's so important. Finally, the next thing that we're doing is here on line nine is where we're actually going to go ahead and register this middleware. We're basically telling the express application, I want you to use the actual logger function as middleware. So if we actually go ahead now and rerun this application, we're going to see that when we actually make the request a slash hello, we're going to get the response back to the browser saying success is equal to true. In our terminal, we're also going to see the very fact we actually had a request made at the endpoint of hello. So let me demonstrate that now. Okay, so here we are now in the browser. Let's go ahead and refresh the browser. As you can see, we did in fact get success true again. Come back here. We're in our terminal and now you can see request received at slash slash hello. So now let me demonstrate the importance of the actual next argument and why we have to call it. So if I now come back into my code and I'm going to comment out next. We're going to hit save. Node mount is going to go ahead and restart our server. Now let's go back to the browser and try to run the same exact scenario again and see what happens. So here we are. We're now going to go try to refresh the browser. But interestingly, what's going to happen now is if we open up our terminal, we're going to see that we do in fact have the log in our terminal that's going to say request received at slash hello. You can see that right over here. However, the problem is you'll notice that the browser is still spinning. It's just hanging. And the, pre the, the problem that we're having now is that the browser is never actually getting the response back from the Express server. So why is that? Well, it turns out it's because we didn't actually call the next function. So let me explain. Basically, what middleware is, is essentially just a sort of, you can think of middleware as like a chain, okay? Each individual link within that chain represents one individual function within the middleware chain. In order for one link to be able to be able to progress to another link, each link must specify that, they, that we're ready to move on to that next link. The way to do that is by calling the next function. That's essentially what the next function does. So it turns out any function that receives the rec and the res also receives an X. And this also includes the actual function that you actually pass to the express method handler or to the express endpoint, which means that the same function that I'm passing here to my slash hello, this function here, rec and res, is also an example of a middleware function. It could very easily also go ahead and accept that next argument. And I'm very soon going to demonstrate an example of how we might actually want to use that. But the point is every single function that express is going to be using will receive a rec, res, and a next. And those are all just pretty much links in the big sort of middle 
to wear chain. In order to be able to progress from one function to the other function, or alternatively, if you want to think of it as sort of links in the chain, in order to be able to progress from one link to the other link, you must actually go ahead and take this next argument that's being passed into you and then call it to basically tell Express, this chain is done, this link is done, move on to the next link within this particular chain. So that's why when we bring the next argument back in, we kind of invoke the function. What's going to end up happening is the sort of order of things of how they're going to be progressing, how they're going to work, because the our server is going to go ahead and receive the request. The first thing Express is going to do is actually go ahead and call our logger function. It's going to log the request received to the terminal, and then after that, it's going to go on to the next function, which is then going to bring us to app.get and then after that we have no next specified and therefore the sort of connection stops the response goes back to the server and we're basically done now this brings me to another very crucial point is that the order of how things are specified is very very crucial so as you notice that right now i just said that the logger is going to happen before the actual endpoint gets hit or before slash hello gets hit and the reason why that is very simply because actually app that use logger was specified before we said app.get so let me demonstrate that now if i have it reverse where i now basically have an app that get um, slash hello first specified and then we have the app that use logger now you're going to notice that actually because inside of my app that get slash hello i'm currently not using the next what's going to end up happening is we are going to make the request in the browser we're going to see that the browser will in fact say success true but we're never actually going to get the app that or the logger function called because our method handler isn't calling next therefore we're not going to be progressing to the next link in the chain and in this case the logger is the next link in the chain coming after our method handler because it's been specified later in the file so the order of which sort of middleware function gets called very much is it gets dictated by the order in which case they're defined within your actual file within your code so let me demonstrate that so now we come back to the browser so let's just clear the terminal so we don't see any old uh, output. We're going to refresh. We just got the response that says success is equal to true. But now the problem is if we bring up our terminal, we never do in fact get that log. So again, the way to fix that would very simply be to go back to our method handler and make sure that we actually use the next argument and go ahead and call the next function. Now you can see we are in fact receiving the next argument. We're going to call it. So now if we actually go back to the browser and do the same request again, we're going to see the response come back to the server. And in addition to that, we're also going to have the output in our terminal. So let me show you that. So here we are, we refresh the browser, we get success true. I open up my terminal and now you can, you can see that I do in fact have requests received at slash hello. So now another very common use case of what you might want to do with your middleware is you might want to actually attach things to your request objects. So in other words, you might want to sort of prepare some data so that your actual method handlers might start using them. A really good example of this is actually what body parser does. By default, Express has no way of actually being able to parse out the sort of JSON or the URL encoded data that the body is. In other words, you might be like making a request from a postman or from within your actual React um, application or however you're making your post request to your Express server and you're going to be sending in a body. By default, Express has no way of actually parsing out that body is if you just do like rec that body just going to go ahead and get an empty object but when you use middleware suddenly now rec that body takes on meaning and that's because what happens is within middleware what you can actually do is you can kind of prepare data that can then become available to you within your actual method handler so let me demonstrate that now okay so here you can now see on screen i specified a function called login this is going to be my middleware function as you can see by the fact that it's receiving the rec the res and the next and then what i'm doing is i'm basically saying rec that user id is equal to one so what i'm basically trying to simulate here is very often what you might do is you might actually use use um, your middleware to kind of handle login requests and I actually have a video where I actually kind of demonstrate this you can find a link to it down in the description box below where I demonstrate how to use JSON web tokens for login and then what I did in that video is I actually specified a middleware function that gets called in every single incoming request to kind of check the headers for the JSON web token and then pull the user out the user ID out of that JSON web token that's kind of a very common pattern and that's kind of what I'm simulating right over here you can imagine that you know we're going to call this login function it's going to do some kind of check to see that your token is still valid if it is it'll go ahead and grab the user ID out of your token and then what it's going to do is it's going to pretty much say rec that user ID. We're pretty much going to be attaching a new property on the request object. The request object that I've expressed by default doesn't have the key called user ID. But because this is just JavaScript, we can just go ahead and attack and you know, sort of tack new properties onto the request object. So we're going to say rec that user ID is equal to one. Now, the cool thing is when we actually now come down to our method handler at this point, the, the request object will already have the user ID on it. And the most important thing is it's going to have the value that we just assigned. So in other words, here where I said rec that user ID is going to be equal to one. So now when we actually go and make the request to app that to uh, slash hello when we're going to be in the browser we're actually going to see success is going to be equal to one so let me demonstrate that now now we come back to the browser let's go ahead and refresh and as you can see success is equal to one and once again this happened because in the middleware function we said that rec that user id is equal to one and then in our endpoint we went ahead and used that very user id that we just attached to it and then sent that back to the browser so again middleware can be used for logging but it could also be used to kind of manipulate data to kind of prepare it for your actual endpoint
Another thing that's worth mentioning in terms of Express middleware is the fact that you're not limited to just having like sort of one middleware function and then immediately going onto your endpoint. You can technically have a whole chain. You're un it's pretty much unlimited. You can define as many middleware functions as you want and then just define them in the order in which you want them to get called and then it's just gonna go ahead and follow that pattern. So let me demonstrate that now. So here you'll notice that I've got a function called one, which pretty much is just going to log that I am one. Then I've got a function uh, called two that's gonna log I am two, same thing for the function three. Then I've got another function called after. Now here's how we're actually gonna go ahead. And, so the fact of how we define these functions is not that important because in that case, the order doesn't matter. The order only matters in the sort of how we're registering this with Express. So here you can see the order in which we're gonna be registering these middleware functions to Express is gonna be like this. We're gonna say app one. app that use one. That means one's gonna run the first. App that use two, that means two is going to run the second. App that use three comes after that, which just means it's going to be the third function to run. Then we have our actual express endpoint, our sort of main sort of endpoint is going to go to slash hello, and then we're going to be registering after. So if all goes to plan, what should be happening is we should have a console log that says I am one, then I am two, I am three, get the response back to the server, and then we're going to have the, the, the sort of log that I am after. And of course, all this is going to be happening very fast. We're not really going to be able to sort of see the distinction, but at least everything's going to work correctly. And one other sort of important thing that I I want to point out is that you'll notice that in this case I'm calling next in every single instance I just remembered I didn't actually write it here which is very important for me to do that but you notice I'm actually writing next in every single instance except for the after function because since nothing is actually happening after after the after function it's okay for me to forget to call the next function because I'm not gonna be breaking any chain because there are no links after that particular link so therefore we're not sort of breaking the chain so now if we come back to the browser, we're going to go ahead and refresh the browser. It's going to say success true, and then we get I am one, I am two, I am three, and then of course it's going to say I am after. Finally, the last thing that's really worth mentioning when, it, when we're talking about Express and middleware is the sort of middleware uh, error handlers. So it turns out that up until now, we've basically been dealing with middleware that are pretty much just going to get called by us. In other words, we're going to specify their exact order and when they're, get, when they're going to get called, and they only receive ar three arguments, the rec, the res, and the next. But it turns out Express also gives us another type of middleware called error handling middlewares. And these middleware functions actually receive four arguments, the error, the rec, the res, and the next. And the distinction, the way that Express kind of knows which one is a regular middleware function versus which one is an error handling middleware function is exactly by the account of arguments that it's accepting. If it's only accepting three arguments, then it's just a kind of regular uh, middleware, the ones that we've just been specifying, the kind of examples that I've just shown you. But if it accepts four arguments, then it's actually an express error handling middleware. Now, the beauty of these sort of error handling middleware is that now in all of your endpoints, if you have some kind of error, you don't actually have to go and handle the error again and again on each individual endpoint. What you can instead do is have one sort of global error handler that all of your express functions, if they're ever going to kind of blow up, they're just immediately going to kind of jump to your express error handling middleware. And then you're just going to have the kind of handling of errors in just one place. So you don't have to kind of repeat yourself again and again. So let me demonstrate that. Okay. So as you can see now, I've got the same endpoint. I'm going to go to slash hello, the same endpoint that we've been using this entire time. Now, what I'm trying to do within this endpoint, of course, is going to be an error. So you'll see, I'm trying to say res the status of 200 that's fine but then in my json i'm trying to say that success will be equal to bar now bar doesn't actually exist but here you'll now notice that on line eight i went and specified an inline middleware now this is the same thing as me sort of specifying the function separately and then passing it to app that use or alternatively you can just kind of inline the function directly to app that use but the idea is exactly the same the thing that's important to kind of notice now, now is the fact that this function that I pass into app that use now, instead of having three arguments, has four arguments. And the first one is actually going to be the error. So you'll see what I'm basically doing is I'm saying const.message is going to be equal to error.message. And then finally, what I'm going to say is res the status of 500.json error.message. And the cool thing now is I don't have to actually go ahead and in my main method handler here of slash hello, I don't have to handle the errors. I just know that if I make any kind of error, someone's going to catch it. So I could have like 100 endpoints and then none of them have to actually go ahead and handle the error because I've got the one sort of global error handler in my error handling middleware. So let me demonstrate how this actually works. So now if we go back to the browser, we try to refresh to make the request onto slash hello. And as you can see, we're now getting the error bar is not defined. So in my actual slash hello endpoint, I did not handle the error. But because an error was thrown and we actually specified an error handling middleware, it automatically went into that particular um, error handling middleware. And then in that one place, we can just kind of handle the fact that we had an error. So if, again, now if we have multiple different endpoints in each one of those endpoints, we don't have to go and handle the errors because we've already got the sort of one global error handler that's going to take care of all instances of errors for us well anyways that does it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful if you did please drop a like subscribe and i'll see you next week in another video perfect